A lot of people were surprised when they found out that you've been signing your name as Champ 2011. How did that come about? Uh, you know, I believe in the law of attraction, and I believe that um, that you can speak things into existence. And I believe that um, when, you, when you know where you're going and you know what you want, uh, the universe has a way of stepping aside for you. And uh, me signing my uh, my signature uh, with Champion 2011 on it, um, it can't hurt me. It can't hurt me. It could uh, it could only help me to believe it even more. You know, so. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, it works for me. You've been saying something that, that I find to be very interesting, that the butterflies in your stomach are in form formation. Right. I've never heard that before. I think it makes a lot of sense. What right. do you mean by that? Elaborate. What do I mean by it? Okay, so um, the butterflies in formation, basically it means um, when you have butterflies and you're feeling anxious and, and you have anxiety or, or nervous, um, that's when you're most powerful, I believe. And uh, either you can... Uh, yeah, you're most powerful. So um, a lot of people, instead of homing this power um, and using it, uh, they allow it to just consume them. You know, uh, there's another quote that says, um, a big challenge or big pressure is like a fire. It's like a raging fire. Either you can allow this fire to consume you and just take you over completely, or you can gain control of this fire and harness it, and you blow it right at your opponent like it's Dragon Ball Z style. All right, so that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I try to get my emotions under control and use the power this of the mind to and, my uh, advantage. You know, I believe that I'm going to stuff his takedowns. And if he does take me down, I believe that I'll be amazing on my back. You know, I just got to thank for the best and, uh, you know, train for the worst. What do you think the sport's going to be, you know, when UFC 200 rolls around? And where, where do you think you're going to be nine years from now, ten years from now? I'm hoping to be a champion. Yeah. I'm hoping to be a champion. I'm believing that I'll be a champion. Um, you know, I would love to grab the belt and hang on to it and, uh, you know, be the next GSP or be the next Silva and, uh, you know, keep the fans excited. Uh, the UFC is growing and it's just a tremendous thing to be a part of. It's changed my life and, and I, uh, I embrace what it is. Jones to the body. And it is all over. John Jones is the youngest champion in UFC history. the future and he might be the greatest talent that we've ever seen in the UFC. John Jones, the new UFC light heavyweight champion. It feels so good. It's a testament that dreams can come true, guys. They really can. Believe in yourself, believe in your heart. And once you get there, don't slow down. It comes true, everybody. I used to meditate a lot. Now I'm more big into visualization. When did you used to meditate? Um, right around 2000. Around 2010, 2011, um, I went through this huge spiritual thing where I, um, I became obsessed with um, the power of the mind. And um, I got into a deep, like really deep, just um, meditation, visualization, and just realizing how powerful our minds actually are, like how we really do paint our world with our thoughts and, and our level of self-belief. And so um, right around 2010, um, so I took myself from being very uh, average-minded to actually believing that I was the shit and believing that I could be the shit and that I could be the GOAT and be the greatest and never lose. And to, like, I took myself to a different place mentally, and a lot of it came from um, mental practice and, and meditation and visualization and just seeking knowledge from people who are strong believers, guys like uh, um, Les Brown and... Tony Robbins and guys like that, I just became really obsessed with just learning about the, the power of the mind. So I used to meditate. Uh, now I just kind of, I have a lot of things that I've, that stuck with me, a lot of ways of believing that stuck with me that just subconsciously I know uh, who I am, what I'm capable of, and how I believe, and how powerful my mind actually is. And I wear this tattoo on my chest, Philippians 4.13, that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And, uh, and I, I genuinely believe that I can do anything. And um, I'm not surprised that I'm still here. And, um, and uh, I believe that I could possibly be here a decade from now. Wow, you still wanna, in your mind, you're like, you don't have an end point. Nah, there'll be an end point. There will be an end point, but I believe I'll go out on top for sure. Really? Yeah. Is that a goal, like GSP? Yeah, I've already won, Ariel. Right. You know, if, at, 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 this, at this level, I could retire today. And, and I've already won. What do you mean by won? I, I've won, man. I, you know, I'm getting my life together. My kids love me. My old lady loves me. 
you know, I'm surrounded by, by people who love me, friends and family. Um, I've already had a successful career. And, um, and I, I'm just, I just say here today, victorious. Mm. It's amazing for a guy who I believe was a janitor, right? And you got into this because you needed to, to yeah. get some money for diapers, right? Yeah, I was, I was applying. To, I was a bouncer, actually, making fifty dollars a night, and I was applying to be a janitor because I would have benefits. Wow! And uh, and right when I was waiting to get uh, the call back, um, someone wrote me on on Twitter, a guy named Gary, a kid that I never met, and uh, and he said, "Hey, my cousin owns an MMA gym in Cortland, New York, which is about forty-five minutes away." I didn't have a car, and I was driving my fiance's car to commute over to these practices. That I got a, I got that phone call. On a, on a Saturday night, and I was heading to my first practice that Monday, that next Monday. The kid changed my life forever. He just planted a seed in my, in my wow. MySpace and, and changed my life forever. Why did he reach out to you? Just like that? God's grace, man. Wow. You were not training at all? Not training at all. About to have a baby, right? About to have a baby, applying to be a janitor. And, uh, janitor for what building? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was like Lockheed Martin. Wow. Yeah. And this guy writes to you and says... I had a picture on, on my MySpace. And uh, I had been weightlifting a little bit. And uh, I had a hat on backwards. And I had some UFC gloves on. And I was, I was posing, you know, being a... Tough being a, guy. Being a poser. Yeah, right? yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, it, something in him said, yo, let me see if John would be interested. And um, I took the idea and I ran with it. And that's how God works sometimes. Why, and how old were you? I was about 19. Wow. Yeah, man. It was crazy, man. I, it, was one, it, was, it, was, it was like one of the best years of my life, man, because I went from a very average thinking person, like just, like just an average 19-year-old, yeah. to, to get in a, I don't like reading. So I, I literally got on all these TED Talks and on YouTube, and I just started YouTubing videos about self-belief and what does it mean to be confident and what, what does it mean to be a winner and how do you become a winner and, and I would watch hours and hours of Tony Robbins and Les Brown and, and TED Talks. And, and I like taught myself how to believe in myself and how to think that I was greater than just this kid that, that was a dropout who, you know, never really had great grades, never really was the starter, never was the captain of a team. I was just always kind of this average person. And, and overnight, I, I taught myself that I could be great and change, change myself forever. And, I'm forever grateful. I'm never going back. Wow. Did you have low self-confidence? I didn't have low self-confidence, no. Um, but I needed to have extraordinary confidence to do what I was getting ready to be doing. Would that kid have believed that all this would have happened? I or... don't think. I don't think. I don't think he knew uh, that he was changing my life by, by giving me an idea. Yeah. It took a couple of years for you to believe it as well, probably, too. Yeah. I think when I fought, when I fought Stephen Bonner is when I really dug into the power of the mind and how important it is to, to uh, look at yourself in a high regard and to believe that first you can. And uh, yeah, that's, that's when I started to fly. So with Rampage Jackson, I kept having these nightmares that, that I would get knocked out. And no matter how the fight played out, I would always get knocked out. And it was always within the first uh, 30 seconds of the fight. So, you know, one scenario I'd run out, He'd run at me, swing a huge overhand right. The other, he would throw a right uppercut. And then another dream, it was a left hook. And I couldn't avoid this inevitable knockout that I was going to experience in the first round. And, you know, I'm a big fan of sports psychology, so I call, I call the, those red zone thoughts, and I actually learned that from Rashad Evans. You know, when you have a negative thought, immediately cancel it with a positive thought. You know, instead of thinking of somebody beating your ass, you think of yourself exhausted, you're winning, the fight's almost over. Sure. Just think something positive. And uh, I just couldn't avoid these images and, and actual nightmares of Rampage Jackson knocking me out. So on f fight night, I felt like I was going to get knocked out. And I felt like it, this was coming for me. I felt like energetically, like I was getting these signals from a higher power that like, John, this is going to happen to you tonight. And I couldn't avoid it. So I, I just had this super deep prayer where I got down on my knees and I, and I touched my body from my head to my toe uh, for the first time. And I prayed this prayer asking God to just give me the supernatural, like reaction abilities, uh, speed, flexibility, 
awareness and and as I was as I, as I was praying this prayer and touching my myself and rubbing myself and, and meaning every ounce of this thinking my life is on the line um, I noticed looking at myself that I was covered in feathers I was covered in white like feathers. a hallucination it wasn't a hallucination, man. It was, it was, it was, it was real as fuck to you. It was very real to me. It was very real to me. I could see myself covered in like there was like small feathers in between my fingers, and I was covered in feathers, and they came up like to my neck, and my face was still like normal, not in feathers, but my hands and feet were covered, and um, I felt like I was like this fighting thing that wasn't earthly, almost, and I like felt this surge of energy, power, sure. flexibility, mental acuity and awareness and sharpness that I had never experienced before. And I like jumped off my, my knees and like landed on both feet immediately. And I was just like, whoa, whoa. And I was just, Wendy's like, what the <laughs> <laughs> My coaches were looking at me like, like they could feel like, okay, he is pumped up. And, uh, Coach Wingo John's like, let's hit, let's hit. And immediately I, I kicked the pad and it was like, boom. And it like, it like, it was like, whoa. And like my kicks were lightning fast and I didn't need to stretch anymore. I didn't need to warm up my lungs anymore. My kicks were going up high. I was jumping higher. I was kicking faster and higher. It was an unbelievable experience. And I actually was able to hang on to this feeling and this illusion of myself being in this alter ego all the way through the cage, all the way through my walk to the cage. And um, and I felt like in that Rampage Jackson fight, um, I walked into that fight as this feather man for the first time. And my, my <coughs> idea to crawl towards him was the only thing that had it happen in all my nightmares, right? Because in every okay. fight I started on my feet. So something just said, get on your knees and crawl up to him. Um, and then automatically the, the dream voids itself of him knocking you out immediately, right? So I did that and uh, I got to kind of, I don't know, fight in an fight in a alter ego kind of state and it was super powerful. Now to this day, I, I say that same kind of prayer over myself and I believe that, that I transform into something. I love that. You, you get to this belief place that you are, that you are uh, more than human at the moment and then you believe that things, as far as just on every realm, are not designed to go against you at this moment. This is, cool. you're actually living in your actual purpose at this moment. This was exactly what you're designed and born to be doing. This is, this is your mark. And, uh, and at this moment, I'm being used by my higher power to like, the fuck shit up. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, dude. Pretty That's much. A beautiful story, dude. Pretty much.